yeah welcome folks uh, we are on chapter 8 lecture number 3 and total 33rd lecture in our series we have chapter 8 is on the high voltage measurement measurement of high test voltages actually we are concentrating upon and we have learned that the test voltages are much higher than the working voltages they have to be higher uh, two to three times that of voltage between the conductor and the ground so uh, high test voltages are, are generated in the laboratory we have learned in the last chapter and now we are learning about the measurement of such voltages rather it is required in case of ac and dc that you measure it with continuous measurement whether you are increasing or decreasing the voltage of course in case of impulse voltages lightning and switching impulse <coughs> it's a single pulse it may be repeated and the measurement is done on it may uh, it is set a say a certain value is set and the requirement may be repetition of number of pulses to be applied upon an apparatus for testing purpose so uh, uh, today we'll be talking about the uh, uh, measurement techniques for the measurement of peak voltage uh, of the applied voltage peak magnitude of the applied voltage you can say what is the why do we need a peak uh, magnitude see in case of uh, dc there is no fluctuation in case of uh, uh, impulse voltage it is one single pulse it will have its own peak value uh, you have we have learned how the standards are defined uh, because it was early with the earlier measuring techniques availability of the oscilloscope cro cathode ray oscilloscopes was inferior nowadays it is very uh, good techniques are there so you can always record the pulse and estimate the peak magnitude in case of impulse voltages the problem comes in case of ac power frequency what there the measurement of uh, peak value is of great importance we have also learned that whenever you apply a voltage on a dielectric the phenomenon which may uh, develop some kind of a damage or some kind of an activity let's say some kind of an activity uh, while testing no damage to to the dielectric should be done i mean you have already provided a good uh, insulation to the apparatus and one has to ensure that the test voltages do not cause any damage to that insulation rather they withstand the test voltage but if something begins something not desirable begins in the dielectric you can imagine uh, when you are applying ac power frequency it will begin at the peak magnitude of the voltage not at the rms uh, or uh, yeah the rms rms level you can always convert into peak not always convert into peak if the waveform is not ideally sinusoidal the you don't know what is the uh, factor required uh, to be uh, uh, divided by uh, the peak value to be divided with to get the rms value so rms value measurement is good enough for power uh, system where we talk not in peak value we talk 
in RMS value of the voltage. For example, simple 400 kV, 800 kV system. That means it is RMS value line to line. But for the test voltage, it is always one thing single uh, phase and of interest to us is what is the peak magnitude applied on the dielectric, not the RMS, because the factor of root 2 may not be valid everywhere. <laughs> and the phenomenon uh, which may be injurious to the uh, dielectric begin at the peak value, not at RMS or other values, they begin at the peak value. And peak value is root 2 times in normally for sinusoidal waveform root 2 times that of RMS value. It can also happen when you are using a test, uh, high voltage test transformer at uh, lower uh, uh, voltage, I mean to output voltage is low. It is possible but, uh, that because of the inadequate magnetic uh, saturation of the um, core, the waveform you may have designed in case of AC power frequency we are talking, you may have designed to get a waveform sinusoidal, but it may not be very much sinusoidal. Then again, uh, RMS, you don't know what is the RMS value. So you would also always like to know what is the peak value. Uh, and rather, in case of AC power frequency, the magnitude of the voltage between the two peaks, that is the what is positive cycle peak and the negative cycle peak, that is 2U max, you can say, is desired to be known, up to the magnitude of the voltage level desired to be known is 2U max. Yeah, I think uh, peak when Yeah, as I said, in case of uh, unlike the power frequency voltage for uh, impulse voltage uh, uh, of different wave shapes where a single pulse or single pulses produce a number of pulses are produced repeatedly as I was talking with a time gap. The concept, concept of RMS voltage in case of impulse voltage is irrelevant. It's, it's not, uh, I mean, it's not there. What you need to measure is the peak the magnitude of the applied voltage. The techniques to develop the measurement of peak voltages therefore have gained importance. Yeah, I did talk that even in the case of uh, AC power frequency voltage, the waveform may not be ideally sinusoidal, then you would very much like to know what is the peak value because the peak value is the magnitude of the voltage which actually uh, um, may begin some uh, bad effects on the, if at all, bad effects on the dielectric. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in practice, let me let me tell you in practice mm, for AC power frequency. For AC power frequency, yeah, let me tell you. For AC power frequency, when we say uh, a rated voltage in kV, what do you understand? Which value it is? Is it peak? or RMS, it is RMS value. And in case you want to uh, give the value of peak value, then you must write this way, KV peak, or even in the book, it should be written like that, KV peak. If nothing is mentioned here, 
nothing is mentioned here then it is rms but if it is the magnitude is peak it must be mentioned peak that is the convention we follow in power system and high voltage generator you ought to know this i mean i know there is confusion of this kind in the minds of the students you know, peak or rms if nothing is mentioned it is rms you can take it for granted if it is uh, mentioned peak then it is peak and if you are referring to peak it should be mentioned yeah so one of the very popular and very old method Yeah, one of the mm, yeah um, uh, yeah uh, is the method of measuring peak value when you can say chub for the skew we call it chub for the skew in 1913 he gave a very simple method for uh, measuring the peak value of uh, ac power frequency actually uh, this was there at that time i wonder if uh, the impulse voltage uh, generator and importance of impulse voltage was at all there so for ac power frequency peak value measurement was important even in 1913 more than 100 years back and chub for the skew method still remains one of the uh, one of the simple one and quite accurate one method as you can see the diagram mm. you take a uh, capacitor we call it in the laboratory a standard capacitor standard capacitors normally are built in such a way that uh, you have its fixed capacitance and it is also lossless capacitor these days you can make loss less capacitor that means the real power loss in the capacitor is so small that it can be said to be negligent negligible so uh, standard capacitors are uh, how can you make then uh, the real power loss in the capacitor to be negligible if you take a gas filled or vacuum capacitors so in a good high voltage lab you do have number of standard capacitors uh, gas filled standard capacitor you could take nitrogen you could take sf6 gas and or you could take vacuum as a dielectric and all these uh, materials would give rise to mi minimum or negligible real power loss in the um, in the capacitor so then as you can see in the circuitry there is, there is a full wave rectifier circuitry and a current is measured i mean the current uh, uh, full wave current that means positive and negative cycle both current magnitude uh, of the that the current it will measure here is nothing but the charging current of the capacitor isn't it this is the ict the charging current of the capacitor um and on the right hand side this is uh, over voltage protection is provided here and little improved circuit having over voltage protection mm. and and a uh, resistor in series to limit the charging current reaching the measuring instrument so that is simple and in such a case uh, as you can see that the charge per cycle or the mean value of the uh, current the mean value of current or charge per cycle will be given by the ic t is equal to c du by dt dut by dt you are applying a voltage uh, here on the top uh, ut you can say the ut is being applied on the top 
So C du T by DT will give you the charging current. Now, uh, it has been elaborated here. Uh, that I, the charging current, over the full wave, that is T, you can say, uh, T is 1 by F, over one complete cycle is being measured. And uh, uh, obviously, if the T1 and T2 are taken for half cycle, and if you had taken it to be uh, for the full cycle, this would have worked out to be uh, zero, so it is taken for half cycle, and the magnitude of current works out to be C by T U uh, max positive plus U uh, max negative. So this is the current. Uh, 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 I mean, one cycle current would work out to be giving you the voltage uh, in the uh, two half cycles to be U max. So the total voltage would be uh, equal to 2 U max. You know? Now, this diagram made here, uh, as you can see, this is giving you U minus, as it is there, written there in the equation, maximum. And what is the, this magnitude? This is this is positive, uh, positive U max, and this is the minus negative U max. So that means the voltage across the total voltage across the capacitor is two U max. Then it if you see. So if both positive and negative peak values are equal, you can take it for granted. They may not be equal. Mind it. The expression for the charging current of the high voltage capacitor can be written I is equal to C F U peak to peak, and U peak to peak is nothing but 2 U max. You know, so uh, uh, this uh, 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 F is 1 by T, so uh, you can you can say. Mm, u peak to peak, what you want to measure is u peak to peak will be mm, u peak to peak u peak to peak will be equal to 2 u max which will be equal to uh, i by c f isn't it? It will be equal to I by C F. So the peak to peak magnitude of the voltage can be measured here. Uh, if you know the uh, magnitude of the current divided by the capacitance, the uh, capacitance of the standard capacitor and the frequency. Normally, this would be for AC power frequency measurement. Now, why are you measuring it? As you can see in this diagram, in this figure 7 here, the two waveforms, current as well as voltage, both the waveforms may not be exactly sinusoidal due to some condition, as I mentioned, because of the magnetic saturation, Fx, uh, um, harmonic uh, component of the uh, current and voltage, the uh, waveform may not be exactly sinusoidal. It will be a little bit exaggerated here. So, uh, as I was mentioning, the RMS value in this case will not be uh, the f for uh, calculating the peak value from the RMS won't be root 2. It will be different. So, you need, you ought to measure the peak value because peak value is the one relevant for the performance or behavior of the dielectric. And this way you can measure the peak value 
of the applied voltage even with when the uh, output waveform of your test transformer is not exactly sinusoidal so that is one big advantage and a, a, uh, advantage another one is that it takes care of the irregular uh, irregularities i mean if the waveform is irregular in the uh, sinusoidal uh, wave uh, wave and uh, uh, that is taken care of so and you want to need you need peak value for uh, testing your equipment so the peak value measurement is a very um, important and desirable uh, measure, measuring technique of the ac power for ac power frequency test high test voltages yeah as i mentioned the uh, knowledge of exact value of uh, f and c uh, the value of current uh, measured given by 2u max the uh, uh, actual peak to peak voltage uh, or value of the voltage um, of the ac power frequency can be determined so this was chef for the secure method as uh, we learned and it's a very very simple so early as in 1913 it was given by them and it is still practiced it is still in use uh, now when you measure let's come to the measuring part of the um, peak value measurement when you measure uh, the the with a, with a, with the help of yeah that was also what we talked about was also measuring part but that was with single capacitor the charging current of the single capacitor now when you do the me measurement uh, of peak value with capacitive voltage divider and it with capacitive voltage divider what do you do as you can see the circuitry the, uh, the this is capacitive voltage divider c1 and c2 uh, across c1 is the full voltage that is the high voltage produced by the uh, by the um, high voltage generator here what we are talking is uh, uh, again for uh, ac power frequency when we are um, uh, measuring the peak value with potential divider the yeah the cm is the measuring capacitor and the peak value of u2 let's say here it should be made here peak value because it should uh, signify the peak value u2 peak value the lower arm uh, the voltage across the lower arm uh, of the capacitive voltage divider and u2 peak u2 if u2 now what happens in this circuit let's try to analyze see u u1 would be given by this equation in for this circuit c1 plus c2 upon c2 into u measured peak this is the peak value measured here okay. and uh, the uh, c here the c cm is the measuring uh, capacitor now not let's not write it here cs let's this is better to write c m is the measuring capacitor and this is your r2 this is r2 this is the diode and this is r2 this is cm and this is the um uh, peak value the measured peak value and uh, uh, 
uh, yeah, across the resistor R R D. This is the resistor. Let's call it because we'll need it R D. So suffix were not given for these two resistors R two and R D, and C M is the measuring capacitor in the circuitry. C M uh, can be uh, uh, will, uh, yeah. Uh, this is what circuit does it make? You should be able to find out. I mean, you should be knowing it. This is the same half wave rectifier circuit, and C M. What is measuring capacitor? Uh, it was written here S. Actually, that is working like a smoothing capacitor. That was that is why it was written S, but you can choose it M because it has been taken here uh, U M and C M would be yeah, is chosen here. There was something wrong. A smoothing capacitor or measuring capacitor C M. So now the U two peak is uh, when U two peak is decreased. You see when. Uh, you apply you when you measure the voltage across cm and you can say voltage across cm is being measured um the it charges to the peak value here and in the cycle when the voltage decreases in the cycle when the voltage decreases cm will hold the charge and the voltage across uh, will not change should not change when should it not change and only under one condition if there is no loss in the circuit if there is ideally you can say this will happen the voltage across cm will not change as it is written here only under the ideal condition you can write here ideally should not change but it does change as you can see in the diagram in this uh, the waveform diagram it does change it does reduce because there is losses you could say across uh, and uh, Yeah. yeah, this is the sinusoidal form is the U two, and uh, this is uh, the peak value of U uh, two peak value. It is it is U two peak value is this much, but the voltage across uh, the capacitor C M U two oh, uh, will Decrease, isn't it? Uh, when the waveform goes to negative cycle, hence U M will no longer follow the change in U two. What happens here? Uh, because yeah, we must learn that. Be, as read it here. Because of the reverse bias current of the diode, this diode, because of the reverse bias current of this diode. There is a danger that U two will gain negative DC component over the time when the voltage across it uh, decreases in the negative half cycle. So uh, the gain U two will gain negative DC component over the time. The diode. Uh, the current, the reverse bias current in the diode, will affect the U two uh, over the time. Hence, U M will not, will no longer follow the change in U two. When because of the reverse bias current, the measured measured voltage will not follow the change in. Actual voltage to be measured. U two is the actual voltage to be measured, and measured voltage is U M in the circuit. Therefore, 
what do you need to minimize the reverse bias current discharge resistors are two as you can see here and rd as you can see it here must be included in the circuit these re discharge resistor it r2 before the diode and rd after the diode must be included in the circuit the time constant rd cm of the, the, the these two together the time constant here rd and cm should be between 0.5 to 1 second uh, to obtain a good response of the measuring circuit for a good response of the measuring circuit the time constant formed by rdcm should be uh, the i mean practice with the practice and it can be also calculated should be between 0.5 and 1 second when the circuit response conditions are taken care the peak value of the voltage to be measured is given by the this expression as we can we have seen here will be u1 peak will be equal to c1 plus c2 upon c2 ump so i hope i am able to apprise you of the problems in com coming in the measuring circuit in the half wave diode or uh, half wave rectifier circuit due to the reverse bias current in the diode and that has to be taken care with the help of providing the resistor r2 and r d in the circuitry as shown yeah so this is the situation for the peak voltage measurement uh, when we are uh, measuring it with capacitive voltage divider circuit so we learned the peak for two techniques so far that one measurement of peak voltage with sub fortescue me method where only single standard capacitor is used and full wave rectifier circuit is used for the measurement of peak value of the applied voltage and when you are measuring the peak voltage with uh, uh, capacitive voltage divider circuit then uh, uh, the measurement uh, is done in this way as explained and uh, we have to take care about the reverse bias current by of the diode and by putting the discharge resistor uh, one after the uh, 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 diode and another one before the diode r2 yeah third technique third technique for the measurement of uh, peak value to measurement circuitry we did talk about sphere gap method very old ages old let me tell you more than 100 years old technique for the measurement of peak value this is on the principle of uh, creating a breakdown between two spheres forming a weakly non uniform field and the gap distance taken is such that the characteristic of the breakdown with respect to voltage is linear if it is changing with the increase in uh, at at the given gap distance it is not linear it becomes difficult to um, uh, to use it as a uh, standard way of measuring the voltage standard way of measuring the voltage is that 
uh, within the linear characteristic of breakdown with respect to increasing gap distance, you, you see one thing. I, I'll draw it here. This is D. And this is UB. Between two spheres. We apply the voltage on the upper sphere and the lower sphere is uh, grounded and it let's say is it is the uh, it is having the both are identical spheres having a diameter of the order of r let's say r both are identical spheres and a gap distance of d is set between them when you measure these are forming weakly non-inform field when you measure the breakdown voltage with increasing gap distance you would measure it sorry like this as you can see it here what i have drawn this part the breakdown voltage characteristic is almost is a linear uh, it may not be yeah it is linear it is drawn also linear but beyond this gap distance set between the two spheres the breakdown characteristic loses its linearity and so you may not be able to depend upon that so you depend upon the breakdown uh, or the gap distance between the two spheres where the breakdown characteristic is linear and that you can say this is up to the r radius of the sphere up to the radius when the d is uh, not greater than uh, d is not greater than radius of the uh, sphere the breakdown voltage characteristic is linear as you can see it here and you want to remain for the measurement purpose uh, within the linear characteristic because when you apply a particular type of voltage let it be dc let it be ac let it be uh, impulse of lightning switching and of various polarities dc of different polarity and positive or negative uh, impulse voltage also positive polarity and negative polarity for a given polarity and for a given type of voltage of uh, type of voltage i mean to say the shape of the voltage that is your lightning impulse or switching impulse the breakdown would be the breakdown voltage for a given gap distance set between the two spheres would be measured at a particular value. So this property of the sphere gaps was first utilized for the measurement of very high test voltages of all the time. And you can also imagine when does the uh, uh, air gap and that means when does the air loses its uh, insulating property when you apply uh, uh, let, let we, let's talk about the ac power frequency voltage it, it the breakdown would always occur at the in case of ac power frequency at the positive peak cycle because for the negative peak cycle the breakdown voltage is higher let me tell so uh, for positive polarity uh, peak value the breakdown voltage is lower and whenever the breakdown will occur it will occur at the peak value of the positive polarity not when the uh, in the cycle when the voltage is still increasing or anything when it reaches the peak value the breakdown will occur so it gives you the measured voltage in the form of uh, peak value itself and in case of other uh, types of voltages 
we have learned the uh, it is um, the uh, impulse voltage it, there is only always a peak value there is no question of any rms value there for lighting impulse switching impulse and for dc also there is no question of any rms value or anything it is always the peak value but mind it for all voltages the breakdown strength of all the dielectrics is higher for neg negative polarity voltage let it be any when you take dc the breakdown voltage for negative polarity is higher than positive polarity if you take lightning impulse the breakdown voltage uh, uh, for negative polarity is higher same is the case with switching impulse and same is the case with ac power frequency voltage uh, for negative uh, cycle peak the breakdown voltage will be higher so the breakdown when you apply ac power frequency will always occur at the positive uh, cycle peak value so this you must uh, no and for this uh, uh, this having in mind this knowledge uh, having in mind people uh, made this uh, uh, use of sphere gap conventionally now when we when we talk about this method the we are i have covered a few point as written here you can read it in the uh, yeah uh, uh, linear portion is there only up to r but the field between the spheres may uh, retain its characteristic as a weakly non uniform field characteristic till up to 2r but the breakdown characteristic may not be uh, linear so we want to remain in the linear part of the characteristic as i have drawn and when you when you increase the gap distance between them the the uh, non linear i mean the straight line is no more there in the breakdown characteristic the field may remain within weakly non uniform field but lose the breakdown characteristic loses its linearity what is the difference between weakly non uniform and extremely non uniform field so long the field is weakly non uniform field no partial breakdown activity would take place in the field that means between the two spheres as soon as the partial breakdown activity begins it leads to the breakdown that means no pb before the breakdown no partial breakdown no stable partial breakdown uh, take place in weakly non uniform field but the characteristic is not till up to the um, last uh, limit of ga gap distance d to be linear so we utilize the linear part of the ca breakdown characteristic yeah what is the disadvantage what is the disadvantage of this type of uh, 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 measurement yeah let me show you yeah yeah i could have shown it slightly earlier can you imagine these sphere gaps in the laboratory these on the right hand side on the left is the sketch uh, taken from a, a IEC standard, and uh, on the right hand side, the actual sphere gap and the diameter of these sphere gap uh, is one meter. As you can see, read it here the diameter of these sphere gaps is one meter. That means, for a gap distance of 50 centimeter, it will make a, a, a linear part. Of the weakly non uniform field. So you can make the measurement uh, till up to 50 centimeter gap distance. But how will you, when you set a particular gap distance and applied a voltage, uh, 
you are not measuring the voltage you are increasing the voltage for a particular gap distance and the breakdown occurs how will you know that how much was the voltage for that these spheres have been calibrated in advance tables are there and these spheres are calibrated for increasing gap distance up to the linear part for different sizes of the spheres and for all the types of voltages how many types of voltages dc uh, positive polarity dc negative polarity ac peak value lightning impulse positive polarity negative polarity switching impulse positive polarity negative polarity so there would be seven uh, different uh, uh, standard tables which you can refer when you produce a breakdown at a particular gap distance by a particular type of voltage you can refer the uh, uh, table when you produce the breakdown at a particular gap distance which you know you know the size of the spheres what would be the what should be the breakdown voltage that is how it's a very cumbersome process i mean you have to refer to the table then you get the voltage and every time you measure the voltage you have to produce a breakdown that is not desirable that was the constraint of this type of uh, measurement but it went on before the uh, better methods which i have already covered covered first where uh, have been developed slowly so these sphere gaps you can say are are having uh, yeah identical sphere gaps uh, and it always measure the peak value uh, yeah another constraint was that if the shape of the voltage that means the uh, for particularly for lightning impulse voltage where the very fast impulse voltage is there that means the rise time to the peak value is very very small of the order of around 1 to 3 microseconds see if the wave shape is faster than that faster than that of the lightning impulse there may be some problems for initiating the breakdown for initiating a breakdown on any surface between the two electrodes uh, that in, uh, uh, at the cathode you require an initiatory electron the presence of initiatory electron must be ensured if the uh, measurement is done for very fast uh, very fast uh, wave shape of the impulse voltage so otherwise it may cause kind of a delay in uh, the flash over to occur and that is what is not desirable a statistical time lag also we, we call it if you have this much knowledge about it that is sufficient at this level just keep it in mind for creating a breakdown between two electrodes by very fast impulse wave the presence of initiatory electron because you know in in air it is the kinetic energy of the electron acquired which makes ionization in the form of avalanche process and for the streamer and all that so the uh, initiatory electron to begin the breakdown process must be ensured must be present only then the breakdown would take place otherwise it may take little time and sometimes the breakdown may not get initiated also so the only way is you apply slightly higher voltage uh, the breakdown would occur but 
uh, it may be initiated with a delay in the uh, formation of the breakdown channel. So this is how the uh, sphere gaps work. And uh, today, uh, these sphere gaps are like in a museum, in a very high voltage lab. They are put aside. Uh, they give you a picture about the high voltage lab, but hardly used for the purpose. But you can, for education purpose, for investigating some other effects, because they are forming weakly non-uniform field in a very long gap distance, you may utilize the sphere gaps in a laboratory for other research purposes and education purposes. So we make a uh, uh, halt here. We will then, uh, I'll explain it to you tomorrow. Uh, the uh, Besides the table, what I was mentioning, some correction factor uh, with the for the atmospheric conditions are also used for measuring the voltage with peak value of the voltage, peak value of the test voltage with sphere gaps. And because of all these problems, the measurement of uh, peak value of breakdown voltage or the voltage, you can say, with the help of sphere gaps is not very accurate. It has an inaccuracy to the order of 3%. That's another reason people don't want to use it uh, anymore. We, you want more accuracy. And uh, another very important reason is every time referring to the table or then uh, the uh, consistency will be there in that linear part. But you have to produce a breakdown every time. So that's why it is not used in practice anymore. Thank you very much. We'll uh, meet in our last lecture on the measurement in the next. Uh, till then, bye-bye.